I heard him talking the day after he talked to you guys because uh, he and Dave uh, LaGreca, they were talking about how wonderful and emotional that uh, interview with you guys was. And and Bully said that he almost called Devon after the interview and said, let's get back together just for those guys. Man. That's so crazy here. Let's that, go, yeah. let's go get them. Let's go, let's go take them. Let's move them to the next level and, and get them up on yeah, to that, to that next year. That, man. You know, they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. That that would be a complete, like, it make, make it the dream complete to have, have a tag team, a, a tag team match with, with guys like that. It would be unbelievable. Yeah, that doesn't even seem real. That's, that, that's incredible. Man. You've got a camera right here. You want to cut a promo on... On the, on, the, on the Dudleys. On the Dudleys right now. Oh, hey, hey, we, we would, I'll give you a chance. Yeah, we, we would love to, to meet y'all in the ring and square off. When it comes to professional wrestling, if you are talking about it, we are talking about it. Welcome to the Wrestle Chat Podcast with the Ant Man. As you see, this is going to be a uh, fun and a different episode. We'll get to uh, Ross and Marshall Von Eric coming up here in just a little bit. I had a fun time sitting down with those guys. Welcome to the Wrestle Chat Podcast, episode 37. My name is the Ant Man. Welcoming in Michael Glavin. How are you, sir? Good to see you. Doing great, man. Thanks for having me. Going to be a, a super fun episode. Uh, great interview lined up, but also lots of lots of things to talk about uh, that, that happened this week. Lots of big bullet points we need to hit, so I'm excited to jump into it. Yeah, and really all of the bullet points start with CM Punk. I guess we could uh, <laughs> we could rewind to Friday. I think Friday he really ran the gauntlet of of what could be his feuds for the next uh, three years. I mean, he 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 called out Roman Reigns. He he said that you know of course the he was the wise man was was his guy first. Uh, so there's something there. I'm sure at some point, especially with the backstage, there's going to be something with Cody. Um, there definitely is going to be something with with he and um, and Kevin Owens, which I'm all about. I'm asking Kevin Owens, hey, have uh, have you uh, have you seen the uh, the the office? Uh, how do I get back there? He's like, no, I don't know where it is. <laughs> Just unwilling to help, and and I think that was. I mean, you, we we talk about what's real and what's storyline. I think right now you just go, hey, as long as you don't punch each other backstage, let's just go real. And here's kind of the story and the angle we want to go with. The rest of the thing, just you guys just run with it. Do you think that there's a lot more realism going on with the punk angle right now with everybody involved? I think they're turning it up to 11. Hmm. I, I, I think that I think the intrusive thoughts are being played out in front of our eyes, yeah, yeah. but I think I think they've all spent enough time together backstage, even since his return. I think they're cool with the idea of it, but I think like everybody else, uh, not to jump ahead to a promo, but they're just waiting to see what happens. Yeah, they're waiting to see if Punk is still Punk, or if there's a new leaf turned over. But but like you said, I mean, what a promo! I mean. Uh, you know, when when we were talking Survivor Series and, you know, I talked about that there are few things that make me pop anymore. And and don't get me wrong. There's there's a lot of great mic workers on the roster today, but there's something to be said about the grit, the tenacity and kind of just the is it kayfabe? Is it not skills of the generation gone by? I was standing up in front of the TV watching and listening to this punk promo because the way he speaks is is from a generation that we've kind of moved on from and yeah. so the ability to to massage and and work all of these angles and then the icing on the cake you know, you can't just go around punching people backstage. It's 2023. You just can't do that. That was and, great. And I was like, that's hilarious. But then the best part of it was in the recap, they kept it. Yeah. They and kept it was it. just yeah. the 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 WWE blessing of, yeah, we'll we'll let you throw some shade. That's pretty that's pretty great. I don't remember the actual like word for word or verbatim line that that Triple H used, but it was during when I think DX was going into the Hall of Fame. And that was when Billy Gunn had already moved over to AEW, mm -hmm. but he got to come back and be a part of this. And he brought up something that like either that Vince could buy or Vince could could put out a business, a little pissant company is some of that started 
starting to kind of feel like, okay, you're going to think everything's fine and we don't really recognize them at all or anything that's going on. And then we'll take when, uh, when some people take shots, we'll remind you of them. And this is one of those. And it kind of, it, that would you're exactly right. I, I popped on that too. I thought that was, that was really fun. Move over to Saturday with, with CM Punk. He should, cause he, on Friday he was saying, well, I don't know where I'm going to be. Is it going to be SmackDown? Is it going to be raw? Is it going to be NXT? Which I actually, uh, you mentioned this. I think that would have been fantastic if for a month or two, you know, just just to get up and roll, and you have CM Punk um, wrestle matches on on Tuesday night instead of Monday or Friday, that could be really fine. But no, uh, we find out later that uh, where he is going. But it, that was the only awkward thing that he came out. And well, one, he was wearing a Bret Hart sweatshirt, <laughs> talking to Shawn Michaels, which Shawn even brought up, and it was weird because that is that's that's one of the most iconic moments in wrestling history, the screw job. I didn't think twice, even after Shawn Michaels said, hey, nice sweatshirt. It didn't click with me. Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Bret. Oh yeah, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart. And I don't know why. I think it's because yeah. Shawn Michaels looks like an executive old wrestling guy now. He doesn't, look, yeah. he doesn't remind me of Shawn Michaels that was in a feud with Bret Hart. Yeah. And, and in all fairness, they've buried the hatchet a couple of times, yeah, of course, uh, you know, since then, but, but it was a nice nod to, uh, to days gone by and to kind of echo what you said. Um, I got to give it up to, to triple H Nick Khan. Um, you know, we've heard rumors that they want to start making NXT, not just a developmental brand, but a destination brand, yeah. um, that just happens to have you know, a developmental territory in it. Yeah. And, and I thought this was potentially the beginning of a few more things that we'll see, you know, they, they wanted us to believe that there was a potential possibility that CM Punk could go to NXT. And to be perfectly honest, while I think I knew that he'd end up on Raw or SmackDown. I actually thought for a moment that there was a chance that he could do that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not, um, unforeseen or, you know, impossible. And so the fact that they did that and he, you know, made a pit stop at NXT, I think it's just really tasteful and really well done, regardless of what the intentions were, is because it established that NXT is something to look at and pay attention to. Anything I ever see from NXT is great. I'm just, we're, we're up to like 16 hours of live wrestling. We are, week. man. And, and, <laughs> so and, much. And the only reason I don't watch NXT, uh, you know, hour by hour, minute by minute, um, is just because I don't have the time. Yeah. But I do read up on it. So great for those guys to actually... Um, you know, put CM Punk there and, and elevate that brand. Well, and and I don't even think this is something we had on our list to, to chat about chat about before we have Ross and, and Marshall Bon Eric on, but uh, TNA uh, made a big announcement this week. They are actually teaming up with WWE's parent company, Endeavor, for a, a streaming platform uh, for those guys. So you talk about content, wrestling content every week. We're going to have, it's going to be even more easily accessible after uh, after that new uh, TNA platform is launched. Back to CM Punk, he uh, he showed up on Raw and he, he signed. And I, thankfully, they didn't make us wait until the last segment of Raw this time, which he even poked a fun about uh, over on SmackDown on Friday. Is that he uh, you know his time wouldn't be cut short. And but on on Monday he um, uh, he signed with Raw and almost immediately after he thanked. Uh, Thank to everybody. You hear the music that we've been waiting for, and that was uh, Seth Rollins' music hit "Burn It Down." Uh, popped on the uh, on the speakers, and we're like, "Okay, now it's time to go." What did you think about their interaction? Mainly the stare. So I'm going to echo what um, what uh, I saw a lot of people on Twitter saying, mm -hmm. um, and I apologize. I'm going to quote one particular person, and I, I don't remember who it was. You'll know who you are. Credit to you. Um, but they said. <laughs> They said, uh, this is the Seth Rollins we've been waiting for yeah. since his architect gimmick back around uh, WrestleMania 31, 32 when he won the title. Um, you know, we've had different incarnations of Seth Rollins, none of them that are bad. Th sure. This is not to say that any other gimmick that he's had, you know, um, is, is bad or undesirable. But, 
you know, I've said very many, uh, you know, uh, quite a bit and other people have as well, that he is the Shawn Michaels of our generation. He is a great worker. Yeah. He is a great character, uh, just a great dude overall committed to the business. And, and there is something that leaves just a little bit to be desired when you're playing this kind of charismatic, over exuberant personality and to see him come out dressed to the nines yes in kind of a flavorful suit but his attitude being that of a champion and that of a competitor and and just looking a guy in the face and saying i hate you and the first chance i get i'm gonna kick your ass <laughs> you, you know yeah and uh and it was just such a perfect uh what i hope is transition for seth rollins back to this character of just a champion, just a guy, just about business. The whole thing, absolutely fantastic. You could feel the real life tension between two guys that are willing to do business. They're, they're perfectly fine getting in the ring. They're not going to hurt each other, but they don't have to like it while they're doing it. And so, man, I'm sure in time, They'll be cool with each other, but that is not what they are right now. And I'm here all day for it. You mentioned the suit. That might be the most normal suit we've seen him wear in years. It's kind of scary if you think about it. And maybe that's part of the transition <laughs> to whatever we're seeing now from, from Seth Rollins. We are uh, uh, coming up a, a week. Well, we are now less than a week away from the premiere or not the, the I mean, it's, they premiered it, but the actual nationwide release of the movie, The Iron Claw. And we're going to sit down with uh, with Ross and Marshall Von Erich. It's about their family. We're going to talk to them, come up here in just a little bit before we leave this part. I want to go back to uh, SmackDown just for a selfish reason. And that's because my brother in law was on TV and he was here. He is shaking hands with Randy Orton. What's funny about that that moment right there with uh, my uh, my brother in law is the uh, is the soldier, and he actually won Soldier of the Year this year. He's a uh, an Army um, Ranger, and uh, he won Soldier of the Year this year. His uh, his squad won Squad of the Year. Uh, been been a fun time. So they got to bring them to uh, uh, tribute to the troops. And back when he was eleven. I think he was 9, 10, 11, somewhere in that area when I met his sister and, and married her. And I um, got to meet Randy and they, the people who were kind of doing the promotion uh, the of the arena where I was working at the time, they gave me a stand-up, a cardboard cutout stand-up of Randy Orton, and I gave it to Chance. And he uh, he used it to what he said was defend the house. If he was at home alone, he would stick that up in the window, so to try to scare away people. Randy Orton in the window to scare away intruders. And uh, then right there, as Randy Orton was walking down the ramp, uh, he got to shake her hands with Randy, and Randy gave him gave him a nod. And, and so it was kind of a little a little mini full circle moment for for Chance and, and Randy, uh, which was a fun time to see. And he was texting me, dear, and going, "Hey, I just shook Randy's hand." And I'm like. Uh, let's free, go see what happened. Camera smack dab on them right there as they got to uh, shake hands and meet as uh, on the tribute to the troops on Friday on SmackDown. So I thought that was pretty cool. Michael, it was good to talk to you today. We've got to jump in uh, and see what Ross and Marshall are all about. The movie is coming out next Friday, December 22nd. The Iron Claw heading to Dallas right now with Ross and Marshall Von Eric. Ross and Marshall Von Eric, welcome to the Wrestle Chat Podcast. Oh, thanks for having us. Thank yeah. you for having us. We're good to, to see here. you guys on. This is literally off the heels of a Von Eric return to Dallas, Texas. That's right. Oh, man. That's right. This has been a this, is, this is a good month for the Von Erics. I, I would say. I would yeah. say. Yeah, a, a big month. And, and of course, coming out Friday is is a movie about your family. We'll, we'll get to that here in just a little bit. You had a moment back in in 2014 at TNA Slammiversary where you guys got to uh, all be in the ring together. How did, you know, Wednesday and Friday feel compared to 2014? Man, we kind of compared, um, we were kind of comparing the two because that's what this, it felt like at first. AEW feels, um, it, it just feels different now because we're in a different, you know, different time in our Same careers. venue, right? Uh, I think so. What was it? UT awesome. Arlington was the one we did in TNA, right? Maybe not, but. <laughs> they but, all look the same now. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. One day we'll be able to say that. Yeah. <clears throat> but you know, it, yeah, being there with 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 Dad, I knew it was going to be something special. And um, 
you know, TNA was special, but we were we were so young and green that we didn't absorb what was really happening. Yeah. And um and it was like last or you know they, these this week it was just been we've been just soaking every every bit of it in sitting with dad and uh, to be able to enjoy it with him and it was it was a very very special moment very very special. I can imagine. I mean him yeah. him coming out. Uh, his music. He I, back in 2014. He was sitting ringside, so it was almost yeah in some yeah. sense expected. Uh -huh. You know, with him yeah. not being there. At yeah, ringside yeah, that was one. special. Yeah, and then the reaction was was great. You know, in the ring, we kind of looked at each other and like, yeah, that's, that's freaking awesome. Yeah, man. you know, that kind of took the nerves away when yeah. when Dad came and did it at TNA. That it was we didn't know what he was going to do. And I, I, mm. I, I knew he was going to come in and like raise their arms, something like that. But the claw was a surprise to me, so I get it was a genuine reaction. I was yeah. the best seat in the house, you know. I was of watching, course. And yeah, it was. Uh, it definitely makes it makes you think your dad's a little bit cooler when you, when you see that reaction. <laughs> but uh, yeah, in my book, he's getting cooler and cooler every day, man. He's he's a good dude and a good dad. <laughs> That's awesome for me. You know, watching wrestling and and playing wrestler, yeah. that was my outlet as a kid. Uh, yeah. What was it for you guys? When when we were younger, I think it like wrestling was a big deal. Like when we were around, like for me, I was like maybe third through like sixth or eighth grade. I was like huge. We're into the Attitude Era, yeah. and so that that was our thing too. And our yeah. mom wasn't. Most moms weren't big fans of the Attitude Era. Yeah. You know, <laughs> no, so not we'd, at all. Yeah. So we'd get like VHS and stuff, yeah. and me and my friends would pass it around yeah. uh, class and stuff. Who was Stone Cold? Uh, we both, we yeah, both, we, we both, always, yeah, we're yeah, always yeah. either Stone you know, Cold always, or The Rock. Oh, The Rock, you know? yeah. 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 See, it's Stone Cold and The Rock, and you fight each other, of right? Of course, yeah. all, all yeah, the time, all the time. And then we love that the Dudley boys were just like, just incredible. They're, and um, the Hardy brothers were someone we looked up to as well, just because they're, they were they were brothers. And um, I remember the day that they split up, it, it, it we, it you know, it hit us hard. I remember we mm -hmm. as kids, we wanted to stop watching when the Hardy boys turned on each other. We were, we were we were so emotionally invested. So of course, yeah, yeah. and we we're like infuriated. Like, How could they do this? Like we thought they, they did it to us, you know, because we loved them so <laughs> much. We took it personal, man. And so we shook hands right there. And we we're like eight years old, and you know, or, yeah, six and eight or whatever. And it's like when we're tag team, when we're, when we're tag champs, we're never going to split up. Like we shook hands right there, and I was like, man, let's, let's hold to that oath, you know. This, this, this man, and if there was ever a cardboard box around, he was going through it just like Dudley's yeah. going through the table. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we yeah. bully and Devon, and they end up being like cool humans and getting to meet him. That's just wrestling, you know. Yeah. Well, D uh, you mentioned Devon. I know that uh, uh, Bully or Bubba Ray. You get you just talked to him on Busted yeah, Open. That's right. A that's few days right. ago, he. Uh, I don't know if he, has he contacted you guys since then. Since you no 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 he not not since not since the, the the show he hasn't. I heard him mention the day after the interview with you, with you guys. Is this somebody at our door? Okay, just <laughs> it's been really quiet up here the yeah, whole time until idea we start to bust recording. In this room right exactly. now. It really oh, yeah. was. <laughs> There's tables that. everywhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> I heard him talking the day after he talked to you guys because uh, he and Dave uh, Lagreca they were talking about how wonderful and emotional that uh interview with you guys was and and bully said that he almost called devon after the interview and said let's get back together just for those guys man that's so crazy here let's that, go yeah. let's go get them let's go let's go take them let's move them to the next level and, and get them up on you know, to that to God that next year that man you know the because we've we've that's what, why wrestling is so beautiful. Is you go up and you look up, you look up to these guys. Yeah. And of course, I looked up to my family and you know as my dad, but it's he's he's my dad, and so we would always you know see, wanted wanted to see what was currently going on. And the Dudley boys were by far you know this the the coolest coolest tag team, and they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. That that would be a complete like it make, make it the dream complete to have have a tag team a tag team match with with guys like that. It would be. Unbelievable. Yeah, that doesn't even seem real. That's that, that's incredible. Man. You've got a camera right here. You want to cut a promo on on the on the, on the Dudleys on the Dudleys right now? Oh, hey, hey, we, we would, I'll give you a chance. Yeah, we, we would love to, to meet y'all in the ring and square oh, off. And uh, I, I don't I don't I don't want to go through that table. I, th I think we're gonna try to send you guys to that <laughs> yeah. table. But if I got to, you know, I'll, I'll, it'll be a it'd be a, a good stone of remembrance for sure. <laughs> yeah. My goodness. I, I, it will be fun that if that happens to look back on this conversation. One hundred percent, really cool. And you know, he, we've, like I said, we we really did always look up to him. Yeah. And um, 
when he, when we talked to him on Busted Open, um, <clears throat> they caught us in such a uh, it was, we were like we were our heads have been in a, a different space for this week. We're preparing for AEW. This is the, yeah. we know this is the biggest match of our careers right now, and um, you know it was there was a lot of emotion going on. So what they got out of that was re, it was real. It was coming from a genuine place. And because we weren't even, like we weren't really prepared or anything, anything we just it felt like we were talking. To, you forgot the cameras were there. Yeah, you know. And so yeah. it was, uh, it, it was, it was that's extremely cool. special, and it was a real, yeah, real moment. And that's when that's when you. I think that not only do you guys get the most real moments, we do too as yeah. fans yeah. watching. Yeah. And you can tell the difference if you watch any amount of wrestling at all. You can tell when they were handed a script earlier in the week <laughs> yeah, yeah, or 100%. when it, it really came from the heart. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I know you and, can tell. And I think that this point in our careers, it's like the, like there was just so many uh, moments in between here and the beginning of our career yeah. where we're like, Oh man, are we ever going to get there? Like there's such a battle, you know, you're always uh, a lot of in between time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so just, man, to have this, uh, this we go the way it has it's just it, it's incredible you know we, we don't feel crazy we, we've we've been um for the you know the years we we spent our early and mid 20s um feeling like we we're in our prime and we, and we would go and uh, do we'd go to japan do israel stuff which was really special to us and then the tna stuff and then we'd um we stayed around texas and it was, it was special but there was a lot of you know in between time am i doing the right thing is this what yeah. i'm supposed to be doing yeah and there was one confirmation that happened to us in Japan in the very beginning of our careers. We were, um, um, it was our second three month tour, and uh, it was one of those back to back ones. And we were probably like 30 days in, where our records like 0 and 25 or something. We're getting our butts <laughs> yeah, kicked sure. by all these these legends, which was cool. But um, <laughs> Great. you know, we were uh, we, we were and we just we felt really green, and we were, like we weren't there yet, and yeah. we were at a rooftop, and. Um, He's like, dude, is this, is this what we're supposed to do? Because I, I don't, I don't want to like dishonor the family because like we're not, good. I don't feel like we're good at it. We're, um, we're not. I mean, it's, it looks like we're not fully into it. And I like, I just want to stop now. And so we, we sat up there and was like, let's say a prayer, dude. Let's just pray and see what happens. And so we said, we said a prayer right there. Like, Lord, if this is what we're supposed to do, let's, let's give an, a sign or an answer or something. And so we went on. Um, we went on, did our match, got our butts kicked, whatever. Um, came back to the roof and we were just sitting there just talking and we scratched our names on this there's a little brick wall or a brick uh yeah a wall and on this building and we scratched our names on it and um started talking about something else and then we come back up there later on through the night just to sit up there and we see a scratch um, i think it was on the other side of the wall and um it it was like initials i'm like well i wonder what that says and we went and we went up there and climbed up there and read it and then it gives me goosebumps telling the story every time because it was the most confirmation. But it was, it said Kev Dave, nineteen eighty something, wow. yeah, some eighty two, and they were exactly our ages at that time. And and we we weren't in Tokyo. We were in some random, like we were on right. tour. We're right. at some little venue. Yeah. That, but like, when it, when it, it was, we had just wow. asked for an answer, and that that that's what we've been writing on this whole our whole careers. Yeah. That's why we haven't stopped. So, so I got, hey, so there's going to be ups and downs. And we're going to stick to this thing, and it's all going to work out in the end. And it didn't get easier after that. It got no. it got hard and harder, you know. And, yeah. And the, but there is light at the end of the tunnel, and that there it's that we that that gave us a, a grip or faith to to withhold what was. I mean, to just go through what was about to happen. You know, and a lot of waiting in between time, but a lot of victories in the middle of it too. You know, so it's special. That's yeah. so awesome. How cool to look on the other side of where you guys. It, it was it was like a setup, and I called my dad because we that was a hard part about Japan. Yeah. You think there's Wi-Fi everywhere, sure. and you could talk to everybody, but yeah. we'd go you know months without talking to him. Wow. And so I finally got to get on the phone and talk to him, and <clears throat> he's like. <laughs> How I knew it was my dad though is he draws draws uh, this, this sketches this little alligator with jagged teeth, and um, <laughs> he and, he used to write it on all tables. Yeah, uh, yeah I, don't, I don't know. What it's was weird. the thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah or shark what he did, an alligator yeah. with real jagged teeth. Yeah. So we do it too, and um, we do it too just as kids. It's now it became habit. But when I saw the alligator, I, thought, I almost I knew immediately it was dad. And then go up there and you see Kev, Dave, and I was like, how the heck? And they man, that thing was so old. They. They it was so the, faded. The fact the that we saw it was the wall, like, though. it was so Yeah, the weird. fact that we saw it was un unbelievable, and we'll never forget it. Well, and you, you brought this up, and it's something I wanted to ask specifically about the movie that comes out on Friday, is because it's right at the very beginning of the movie. 
it's um, uh, Zach Efron's voice playing your father. And he said that uh, um, mom raised us. I, I'm butchering the line. No, no, Sorry, no, no. Sean. Uh, but the, the line had, had something that, um, you know, life was hard. Mom took us in the faith direction. Dad took us wrestling. Yeah. Mm. I feel like the movie touched on all the wrestling parts. Yeah. What's been your faith walk? Dude, man, that, that, that it was the, the, the thing. And who knows, who knows, but the, that was the thing of the movie is that, that is such a rock in our family. Cause my dad is, um, has endured so much, uh, uh, I've, you know, there's not many stories like that. Cause my dad and his brothers, um, what I wanted them to grasp in the movie and I, they did a pretty, they did a good job, but the, the closeness and I don't, I think it'd be hard yeah. to grasp that. They were so close they yeah. they 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 knew they just knew each other so well they didn't have sisters it was just a boy house yep. you know so it's yep. wild and they all they, they love poor grandma yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah poor my nanny i feel it's bad for her. but you know that they, they they had they, they they had each other and for my dad to have that taken away um taken away because i know what me and my brother have it's 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 special you know we we bounce everything off of each other we my every story I have in wrestling, he's there. Every story I have in life, he's there. Yeah. He's been with me the whole time. I've been with him, and to lose that is my dad lost it. You know, four or five times is 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 unbelievable. And and he said there was at one point he said, "Okay, God, it's too late. I'll, I'll never be able to enjoy again. I'll never have the capacity to enjoy anything again." Mm -hmm. And years go by, and he's he remember he was just he told us he's like I'm happy I have 20 grandchildren it's or insane. 20 family members yeah. and he's like my cup runs over yeah. and and my dad never pushed any like uh, faith on us or anything he wanted us to figure it out for ourselves and um but we what what we saw with my dad was a uh, not like a churchy relationship mm -hmm. at all with with, <laughs> with God no he, he would cuss and say God be with me damn it and like he, yeah. he was just different and he was he, when he'd pray he was like he was really like he's really talking to somebody yeah. he, he, he believed it they and, weren't empty yeah yeah exactly and, yeah and he, he he meant it and so growing up it had us have a a different like relationship with God too I was I had the fear the fear of God like this is the Almighty I but it, we had to have our he wanted us to have our own personal experiences yeah and and sure enough my dad must have prayed because we've both had personal experiences and my feet are on the rock and and that, that that's why it's re wrestling is a totally different world and you know we're before we're wrestlers you know we're followers we're followers of, of christ but we both have our personal our personal relationships with him we both have our own stories he has his i have mine and and luckily i think that's what grounds us so much is we have that to to, to bounce off of each other you know and and god has been nothing but beautiful in our lives and we feel like this is the time everything starts all those waiting in betweens sure am i, am I doing what, what if I'm, am i doing what i'm supposed to do am, am i really even a, a wrestler why is no one booking all that stuff i mean i'm stuck in hawaii i can uh, imagine yeah, yeah yeah like um and Hawaii didn't sound a bad place to be stuck. Right. In, but, uh, <laughs> but it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Stuck in paradise. But, uh, but you know, the, it all, we, we all know it's coming out for the, the ultimate good and the, the timing of the, all this stuff's out of our control. The timing sure of the is. movie, um, getting contacted by major companies and all this, all this all started happening. And we just know it's time now. It's time and we're ready. We're ready for it. Yeah. And before we weren't, if we would have had it handed to us in the beginning. We, we might not have even had the, the fire yeah. back then that we do now because yeah. we want just so badly for my dad who's believed in us the entire time the entire time to see and to experience and <clears throat> to if we you know our we, we talk a lot like if we would if we could become champions at an elite level and bring those belts back and to them and just set them there and like you believed in us this whole time you called it you know here here you go you know, they're just that feeling of satisfaction. Every step of the way, he really is like, y'all are going to be great. And he, like, believes it. He keeps really, telling us, yeah. He, he, and and I, I'll, I'll, he's, a, he's a greater father than he is a wrestler. He's a great wrestler. But the, the kind of dad he is, man, and, and grandfather to the kids, like, I'll get, I can, watching him with my sons, he's sitting there, I was like, man, that's Kevin Von Erich. And my son's got him, like, bent over and, like, punching them in the head, wrestling them, like, uh, you know, just, just, they're so close. My son knocked his tooth out. He back head, my dad was holding him, he head him in the tooth. Oh, goodness. Twice like, that happened. Yeah, twice that happened. He said, like, dad, dad was like, I look like a damn six-year-old. He's missing his front tooth, and we got it fixed or whatever. But my son's already knocked some teeth out. But it's, it's he's, the, he's, a, he's a 
he's a great man and you know and I'm that 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 that's it we, we want people to when they look up who is Kevin Von Erich, the, yeah. the movie will bring in new people too sure. and we think the story can help a lot of people a man that suffered and had every lost everything um that there's light at the end of the tunnel and wanted to to you know when you google Kevin Von Erich, look he's happy he's loved He's um, he he's amongst family that love him, and yeah. his and his sons are successful. What what, what you can do? Because my dad has always said he's like, um, he's like a man that he's like. I would consider myself a rich man, not money, uh, money, money. I've had money, I've lost it, I've had it again. And he's like, and I, I've had every possession that somebody would think they would want. Yeah. And he's like, but he's like, what I have in my heart and this peace I have with God. He's like, I'm I'm a rich man. And he's like, and you can't bless a rich man. The way you bless a rich man is you bless his sons. And that's what God's going to do for you. And he's been saying that from the beginning. And my dad's just a, he's just full of wisdom, you know, man. Yeah. We believe that's it, so though. so good. Yeah. And if I'm wasting time being hopeful, great. But I believe it. I 100% yeah. believe it. Well, and it's not just something that you guys say. Like, you can tell the conviction in your voice and on your faces when you're talking about it. And, you know, you brought up something uh, particular there. And it was, you know, we're not in control of any of this, yeah, but yeah. we tend to get in a hurry and man, I'll raise both of my hands saying, you know, about getting in a hurry on things. I've got the idea. I've got the drive. I need it to happen. Yeah. Exactly. Now You're full of the zeal. Yeah. Like you'll go and do it yep. right now. A hundred percent. I feel God is saying, but I'm going to show you the patience. <laughs> yeah. The right that's time the because hardest you, lesson too. you can have it. What's the, you know, it, you really see it when you have kids, you know, 100%, you see it, 100%. It's that you can have the, you can have the, little teddy bear now just because you want a teddy bear or you can have the big giant one that you don't see that's in the closet <laughs> yeah. if you'll be patient yeah it's i want that right one in front of me right well now said, exactly yeah. the one i can see that's yeah. that's well said and you know the, the cool thing the cool thing is you know we'll we'll tell stories to each other all the time i, I we love stories and yeah. so um there's actually the the story any great man used in in the the bible there's always a, a thing of like patience or wait like moses he wanted to be used by god Right then, he had all this zeal. So, what did God do? Sent him out for forty years to 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 tend the pastors, to, and you know, to tend, be yeah. a shepherd, you know. Yeah. And then he was ready. And so, it's like patience is is key. And and it's I, I feel I feel like we've you know um, not now it's just I'm just so grateful for every. I'm trying to absorb in every second, and actually enjoy it because a lot of my career I wasted not enjoying. I'm spending time being yeah. stressed out or worrying about the next thing, worrying about the next yeah, thing. Totally. That's, but that's like you said, when, when you know it's out of your control, yeah. the pressure's kind of off, you yeah. know, and it's like, I'm just going to go out there and deliver, do my best. Like I'm wrestling just for him, you know? Yeah. And, and it's, it really is like, uh, he, he does the rest. He's been taking care of the rest. We have, we don't, we're not good at promoting ourselves. We're yeah. terrible on Instagram and messenger, <laughs> all that stuff. We're, the people that know us know that. And, You've you know, liked all my photos. I, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Agent back there. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, I know there's a guy who had a, a small role in the movie, um, had an EP credit. Uh, you guys have wrestled a few times. Yeah. MJF, Maxwell yeah. Jacob Friedman. Tell me what your experience with him. You know, man, I'm like, we're like, we look at him almost as he's a little bit younger than us. Sure. And like, almost like a little brother, like, He's so full of charisma and personality. It's like, it's like almost cute, you know. And he's but so he's good. got the attitude of yeah. a little brother yeah. that drives you crazy too. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, yeah. When yeah. we see him doing his thing, because yeah. it's the the greater he is at it, the to us at the funnier. He's like, man, he's like made for this. It's like we <laughs> like we laugh at the most unnecessary stuff, but sure. we, just watching him being around with like people and stuff. I like, mean, he's just full of confidence. He believes it. And even my dad, when my dad met him, he's like, that kid's got it. That kid, yeah. he, he knows he's got it. He knows it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Was like, yeah. And, and you, you don't see a lot of that, you know, nowadays. And, and, and we, I got to, we got to wrestle with him a few times. And, you know, it, it was like wrestling an old school wrestler. It was, yeah. it, it was, it was, it was fun. He got, yeah, it just heat. totally just gets it. Yeah, like, he just 100%, gets it. Yeah. He understands it. And I, and I really expect big things for him. I, no matter what he does, he's the kind of guy that finds success. And, yeah. and so he's, yeah. he's, I'd be just get used to seeing him. He's definitely yeah. going to, he's, he's going to be great at whatever he does. And right now he's kicking ass in wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> he really is. And, and, and he's, you know, you're talking about, uh, we, we just had the discussion you know, about uh, wanting everything. Now it feels like that he truly, when you really yeah. pull the, the facade off, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the character of MJ off and, and, and get a little glimpse at behind the scenes. He's done, he's worked. Yeah. Yeah. And he's put the time in and he's studied and which we just see 
this dude that popped on at a at a big event that Cody Rhodes mm -hmm. and Young yeah. Bucks set up, yeah. and then all of a sudden he's moving up through the ranks in AEW, and four years later he's the champ. Yeah, we yeah. see the glory, we don't see the yeah, struggle. Of course, you know, one hundred percent. That's social media. We were just yeah. talking about yep. that. It's like if you don't judge us by our Instagram or anything like that, you see, you, you just see the you're seeing the glory. Yeah, that, it looks a lot better than it is. Yeah, than it is. <laughs> Everybody, I'm sure everyone's like that, you know. But it's but yeah, it, MJF. We, we we you know we were on the independent scene while he sure. was, and he's everywhere. He was everywhere. He's going to Ireland, the UK, Japan, everywhere that he that he needed to be to get where he's at now. And yeah, he went through all the doors that, that opened. And so he's going to be, yeah, guaranteed. He'll, he's going to be a, a great one. So you, you wrestle barefooted. That's right. That's right. So do you do it the same reason that your dad did? Cause you, yeah. you wear boots. Yeah. You, so we're, we're, uh, we're Kevin and Carrie here. Yeah, yeah, I'm nat naturally I'm barefoot, all, but so is he. He's bare. Yeah, he we're always you? barefoot. My dad and uncles were always barefoot. Okay, my dad was the one that just pulled the trigger on yeah. it. But yeah, it, it's a big. We're we're you know it's 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 really good for you to be barefoot a lot in the ground. And stuff. I, I didn't think my granddad liked it when my dad started doing it uh, originally. My dad forgot his boots or something where he didn't have to wrestle them in a, or yeah. didn't have to use them in a match, and he's like he'd never go back. And he's talking about the balance and. What drew, drew me to it is he was like, you know, I can take my work wherever. I throw my trunks in my back pocket, and I can work wherever I'm at. I don't, oh, I don't need to carry yeah. a big bag with me. Yeah. That's what pulled me in. I bet. So, but I wear knee pads, so it's a little... A, a little well, you've got another more, pocket. You can put the trunks in one pocket <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the knee pads yeah. in the other. Right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't think I'll ever wear boots. I've wrestled with, like, um, trained with boots on, and my feet just don't like i like twist an ankle or something i just feel way better barefoot you how know? about that yeah i, I love it and did you guys ever get a chance to visit the sportatorium uh the, when i was really young i saw yeah. it while it was still intact yeah and um you know we've went and visited the the land that it's on yeah and that was even that was a really like you had a it was a cool experience because you could you felt a little something there yeah you know? like how much work and blood sweat and tears you know your family put into that that little uh that piece ground. of real estate yeah, right sure. there you know yeah. it's mlw is the one who brought us to the to the to the grounds of ml or to the grounds of uh of, of sportatorium. sportatorium with our dad and um and we had never been there all three together wow so it was a little youtube video of it okay but it was a, a genuine it was a genuine moment and i don't know if the whole moment was on there but it was my dad started talking about all, all the blood and sweat that went into this and how uh the kind of guy my daddy's talking about you know like uh, 80 years before that coyotes used to roam around you know he's, he was just like explaining the mm -hmm. setting we're just getting so into it and then um if we're if we ever have a special moment we'll pick up like a rock off the ground and call it a stone of remembrance just yeah. to remember and um he's smart he labels his rocks i got a freaking bag full you of have no idea where the know, I, was like, uh, I was like man <laughs> i, I should have i should have labeled them but i got a lot of cool rocks i guess from different places but we have that was a special moment for us we we're there Not together bad. and to feel we felt like there felt like the energy there my grandfather at one point, it was just a kid with a dream that wanted to do to stop being poor, you know, and, yeah. and start something. Yeah, he had a, my grandpa had a real rough childhood. My uh, my great grandpa would he would fight or get him to fight the other kids in the neighborhood, uh, you know, and so that was obviously probably pretty traumatic as a kid, you know. You're sure. like because he was just a big, strong kid for his age, and so man, it was a different world back then, you know. Yeah. But uh, you know, he he rose up out of that and. Definitely made a hell of a name for himself, and big time. Yeah, yeah. you know, for all for all of us fans, uh, the way that we get to experience what your family did for the business is on YouTube or, or you mm -hmm. know, WWE Network on Peacock or what have you. How is it for you guys? Do you have home videos that you get to go through, and you have the other stuff, or do you just have what we have? Yeah, we we have we have some home videos yeah. and stuff. Like um, I threw discus in uh, in high school. Oh, nice! And because I saw my uncle Kerry did it, and I I wanted to do something other than just football. Yeah. And um, I asked my dad, I was like, hey, "What else? Like, what am I good at?" And uh, and he's like, um, "You track, you're fast, you can jump high, you you know, you should get into track." And then I saw my brother doing it. My brother was great at the hurdles and all that. And I tried the hurdles, and I was okay with it but him and my dad are the the the, the speedsters of the of the of the family and uh, i'm not slow but i'm not super fast <laughs> but uh <laughs> your power right uh, yeah yeah your power. yeah so i got into discus and i um i i have a video there's only one video of my uncle carrie throwing disc and he you know he qualified for the olympics in that year they got, got boycotted and so i got in my freshman year and 
it just felt natural. It felt, it felt really natural doing it, and it got better and better. And then eventually, I was uh, my senior year. I was uh, number one in the state of Hawaii, dude. And it was it was you know it was just watching that that watching videos of my uncle Kerry, but I would have done anything to be taught by my grandfather because he was also a discus thrower as a record at SMU and. That was like a, I thought that was that was what that was gonna be the thing I did. Sure, but I'm so glad I'm so glad it's this, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Be in the family business. Yeah. The uh, so the movie's coming out. The Iron Claw, uh, written and directed by Sean Dirk, and he's actually gonna be on the show with us next week. Uh, excited cool. to talk to him and get that angle of, of yeah, somebody yeah. who's because here's the deal is I'm I, I'm a I'm from Southern Oklahoma, so world class championship wrestling was my that was my show watching oh, it yeah, every so week oh, from man. the sportatorium on TV in Southern Oklahoma was my thing. This guy's born in Canada and discovered world-class championship wrestling when he lived in England. One of the, I know, that's unbelievable. That's, and we have this in common. How is that even, so I'm excited to talk to him to see what, how yeah. that even happened. With that, him. That's so cool. What the, what the, the internet has done to wrestling right sure. now, you know, it has changed it so much. I mean, it might not have been great for the eighties just cause you, the heel, the baby, you want a lot of that stuff parties <laughs> and yeah, a lot of stuff would have surfaced and a lot of guys would be in trouble right now. Sure. But you know, it, it is cool that it, everything's accessible now. I, really you know, is. you can, you can watch, you can, if you're wrestling a guy, you can watch videos of him and, you know, and, prepare for a match or whatever. And so that, 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 that aspect has been, yeah, really Sean cool. Durkin though, he kind of had like a, uh, he felt like he had like a uh, like it was his purpose to do this thing. He would just yeah yeah the way he was telling it to us like he knew one day like I'm gonna make a movie on this. He was like kind of just infatuated with uh, with world class you know for whatever sure. reason he's I think he saw a uh, I don't want to butcher it but he he got just a, a VHS back in the day and that's what started it I think and man it's uh, it's crazy that it all came to fruition and uh, yeah. well how's it feel because you've seen the movie. You, yeah. you've watched it how's it feel to see a depiction of your i won't say it is the full you know it's not 100 yeah. percent fact across at some point yeah. it becomes a movie and a story how does it feel though to see that on the big screen man it's it's really is just it's a huge honor it is and yeah. it's like and i'm and i'm really glad because a lot of like a lot of people can probably gain something from all the ups and downs sure. and you know the the do's and do not do, you know, that kind of thing. And, um, it was just, uh, I'm glad uh, people can hopefully benefit from it. That's our, you know, our main yeah, desire, yeah. I think. Yeah. And, and you could tell it was coming from a, a good place. Sean is, he's, he's a, he's a good, he's a good guy. He's like a, yeah. he's a really genuine good yeah. guy. And he related to the, the suffering, to the, like the, the hard ass dad thing. He, yeah. he really had a little bit, he related to a little bit of everything. And so, that's why the movie you feel something if you know as as the family of course he doesn't look like him he doesn't you know you got to get past all that yes. and yeah. watch it as a you know and that's what I want the the the, the von Erich fans to you know to watch it with you know just you know open your eyes when you watch this this is this is for the you know the or more grand yeah. grand scale of yeah it. we know some things are going to be off or whatever sure. you know yeah. but it's it's a movie it's you a know? great but it's a it's a great it's a great movie it really is yeah. it's a, it's a good movie and. I want to. I want to see it again. You know, I'm. I'm, I'm probably going to buy a ticket and go watch it again. Yeah. You know, just to yeah, go do yeah. it and experience it in the theaters. You know, I saw it at the premiere here in in Dallas, mm -hmm. and yeah, I'm, I'm ready to see it again because I. It, it it was that thing. I knew so much about the story yeah, just exactly, from yeah. everything that happened, and you have to get past that certain people don't look like certain people, and you know, yeah. I know that that's probably you know I don't know <laughs> that that happened right after that. Yeah, or that, yeah, that, that, that stuff. Chronological stuff. But now go back and watch it and just enjoy the movie yeah, after, yeah. you know, and I did enjoy it the first time, but you know, yeah. just, mm -hmm. it, it's hard not to go there, especially when stuff does look so much like it did. That's the outside why. of the sportatorium that was looked crazy. exactly like the That's outside of the sportatorium. Think, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, we popped when we saw it in person, oh, like we were like, this is crazy. And then you go inside yeah. and they built like a full like reenactment of it. And it was, and they threw it up in a couple of days, you know, Hollywood set kind yep. of thing. And, you go in our granddad's <laughs> office and it, it feels like you're a little kid. There's like, there's a cigarette burning. There's that, you know, it's just like <laughs> smelled. It, 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 it felt like they captured it. Like they captured it. Yeah. Good. yeah. Good. It, was, it was, it was a stunning feeling to be in there. Yeah. And then Holt McConley, the guy who played my dad, um, when he oh, walked in, yeah, my granddad. Yeah. yeah. When he walked into the room, um, you know, people always say about my grandfather when he walked into the room, uh, you know, everybody kind of get quiet. He just, yeah. he was just, he had a presence, he had a presence, a presence sure. about him. 
And I don't know how Holt McConley did that, but when he walked in, just for shooting, no cameras around anything, he walked in, everyone gets quiet. He has, like, walks like my grandpa, sounded like him, and it felt like, you know, I was, it was almost weird. It was almost yeah, weird. Yeah, he studied for, like, hundreds of hours, not even exaggerating. That's what he said. He listened to podcasts and, you know, took classes and, it, it's amazing the amount of effort and work like sure. all the actors like man so much respect yeah. for all everything they all the work they put on they put into to do it and the the study of it and uh it's man it, it really is unreal it's seeing your your family story on the the big screen yeah. it's yeah there's no words for it really it's, you guys got to be in it though too that's you right to yeah, that's right, right? How did it feel to have Von Erickson an actual Von Eric movie? <laughs> that, that, <laughs> you're, that's, you're the only two. You know, that, yeah. that's why we're so happy. It was a good, it, it, when we watched it, it was a yeah. good movie. Yeah. We're like, okay, thank God. This it was is a relief. Good yeah. Because yeah, I was I like, once we're in it, it's like, it's a, you know, we, we, we have to support it. But then it, we, once when we were in it, though, we're like, man, this is, this was a, it was a great experience meeting everybody and everything. Yeah. But I, we, we said that in the car. I was like, if, it, if it's a bad movie, we look like we support it because we were in it. And then it ended up being a great movie. And like, dude, that, that, that was good. And being there, we got, uh, we're really comforted once we got there, yeah. meeting everybody and um, just watching some scenes and talking to everybody and seeing how serious everybody was taking it. And so that. And then, that, have, and then having Chavo there was great because, yeah. you know, Chavo's like family, basically. Sure. And, you know, he's not going to sit there. And But it was, it was just all cool. And then sh we met Sean, who directed it, and he was just great and genuine and total had love and respect for the the story and so it meant something to him for yeah sure. it was good what was something that you wished was in it that wasn't that what maybe my my um my uncle carrie's yeah. personality my uncle his Carrie, humor too yeah, yeah. my dad there, there were there were they were joking with each other all the time everything was my mom said it was impossible to go in public with all three uh, my uncle dave and uncle carrie and my dad when they were together they would try to out embarrass each other and she said it just it'd be chaos <laughs> yeah. it'd be it'd be chaos they'd fall down escalators and just all, all they're taking all, bumps in the yeah, ball yeah. bumps and yeah, yeah that, that wow. kind of stuff and um do whatever they, they they'd do anything for a rib to, to, to make make a kid laugh or something like that I remember my sister had a story of my Uncle Kerry eating a burger on a balcony, and there was a big crowd of people right under the balcony for some concert. And he's like, I didn't order tomatoes. And he's throwing his <laughs> tomatoes and his onions <laughs> off. And my sister's sitting there watching, laughing and stuff. And I was like, man, you think about it now. I was like, man, he's just, just like threw food all over people or whatever. But then my, my Uncle Kerry was, yeah, lighthearted and um, – uh, always, you know, always joking and stuff. But, but always, I mean, the, the movie would have had to have been so long to, to, to get, get all, all that. that. And, and they put a lot of stuff in there that they, they had to trim down. Sure. Yeah. You know, for, for what they had, what they worked with, it was, yeah, it, it was, it was great. And Jeremy Allen White did a, did a great job, got in good shape and stuff. And, and it was, and, you know, it was, he, did, he still did great. Yeah. I met your Uncle Kerry probably three or four times. Really? Uh, growing really? up. And what I remember about him to this day is there wasn't a time that I met him that he didn't tell me about Jesus. Are you, Are you serious, serious, man? Ever. That's unbelievable. I didn't. I never and I don't know where he was in his in Whoa. his state of mind. It was, you know, he what I'm saying, that part shined through whatever he was doing, man. Dude, that's it, Ever. yeah, that's this, amazing. Thank you. For this is a real moment that. for um, for me and and him because dude, that, that that's what keeps me like sane in wrestling, one hundred percent. Like if I, it's a high stress all, environment. Yeah, man. there's a lot of like waiting, anticipation, and um, you're meeting important people. You know, sh sh shake this guy's hand, this this and that. But if you look at it like, yeah, there, there's going to be there's there's kids coming. There, there's kids. There's people coming to this show. Um, every single one of them's got a story. Everyone's, uh, everyone's uh, been going through something, and you know it, it's, you know, it, it's seeing my uncle Kerry would to take time with people. It shows like man, he, that's how he was dealing with it. He was dealing yep. with it too, and yep. you know there, there's a there's a lot of broken hearts at matches. There really is. There's a there's people there that just want to get out. They had a hard week at work or got fired, lost somebody. And they're coming to escape. You know that's what wrestling does. Yeah, they're coming to it's escape. It's an escape, yeah. and it's a, and it's escape. And so that you just made me love my uncle Carrie a, a little more, <laughs> man, because that that stuff is well, good. That means I know where he's at. You know, so it's that's beautiful. Wednesday yeah. night, you guys had an appearance on Dynamite. Mm -hmm. 
Friday, you had a match on Rampage. Tonight, you have an appearance on, you're going to be wrestling on Collision, mm, correct? That's right. Are Ross and Marshall all elite? Hey, that's we'll, we'll see. I, 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 we we both we both we both know this that. Or is Tony Khan just very very smart to do something with the Von Erichs in Dallas, Texas? I don't I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know we, we we both. Or is it both? We, we both feel like um, the trajectory is we we we're we're, we're going to be at the top. We both know it and we feel it, yeah. and and so we. We would we would rather all elite wrestling. We're proud of the product. We love everything that they're about, and you know, and and so we're, we're you know, this is this is what yeah, we're. It would be it would be a huge honor, you know, to yeah. to be a part of AW. Obviously, yeah. But no matter what, we feel like we're we're, we're going to be at the top some, somehow somehow. Yeah. And we hope it's we with, hope it's with how guys. everything is gone. We just feel like our our time has yeah. come now. We're we're we are who we are now. Like we yeah. we got the wrestling part down. We got legitimate. Uh, we we really have our, our our gimmick is like it's not a gimmick. We're we're out to, to prove the family is not cursed. Right. My dad right. is we're is we're gonna make him happy. You know by uh, we we want to succeed just for his sake so he can see it. You know and it's just it's so much deeper than just we want to get over. Yeah. You know yeah. It, yeah we want him to see the you know the fruits of his labor raising us and and believing in us and my mom you know telling us you know you're gonna be great one day you know and just like all moms do that probably you know but it's a uh, man what a uh, what a great opportunity and cool season we're coming into we just feel like like the big that big thing we've always been waiting for is like right here right around the corner and so yeah yeah we, we have the confidence now we have the confidence that we believe we believe it we didn't believe it you could see in the beginning of our careers that we didn't fully believe it yet and now we we believe it and we want it as well and so yeah the the, the von Erichs are shooting to shooting to be all elite that's what that's what, yeah. that's what, we're, that's what we're shooting for you've had briscoe matches that's right have you had an ftr match Oh my god! That, that's a big reason why we want to be all elite. Is be with that, that, I think it's how, time. Man, I think it's FTR time. would be a. We love we love their style, their their tenacity. Man, they're just they're classic. Everything you want in a, an opponent, like yeah. gritty, tough. Yeah. You know, you know, stiff. All that yeah. stuff. Yes. Man, that, yeah, every bit of <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, every bit. We we that, that's snug. that's it's the best kind of yeah. wrestling is yeah, snug, stiff wrestling, and then that that's exactly what we're that's what we're going for. You know and. It would be an honor to, to to work with them and and finally get it done because I in my head I, I I envision it already so I know it's going to happen it's coming. Oh, and one more bully and Devon right back in the camera again. Do we need to do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> whenever, whenever they're ready. yeah, well, I'll, man, I volunteer. I'll, I'll take the table just out of. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Look, they're not even they're not even negotiating with you. And you've now negotiated. <laughs> yeah. and you take going through the table. Yeah. yeah. We're cracking under their pressure already. It's easy. You, you can feel exactly. it. their presence is so strong. I know. I, honestly, I just don't want to mess it up. The fact that he said that, I, I'll just, I'll just man, leave uh, it there. That would be it would huge be huge opportunity, man. It would be unreal. We we, be we know a lot massive. of great men that um, bull, like Bully and Devon are their mentors and stuff. Yeah. So he's just a, just a fountain of knowledge, you yeah. know. And so we'd probably yeah. come out we, way better after that match. Anyway. Yeah, we saw him at an indie show one time, and he was just passing through right before. I think he went back for the WB uh, Royal Rumble okay. at the time. Yeah. So it was like his last, he was on the Royal Rumble the next day. Oh, wow. You know, and like he, uh, he everybody was just like, whoa, it's, you know. Came and then, in, blew the, the roof the, off. The, yeah. yeah. And, and he actually acknowledged us like, oh, you know, uh, he like knew who we were. Yeah. You know, I forgot. He trained one of our good buddies, Hunter yeah, Hayes. Yeah, that's right. Hunter Hayes. And, yeah, and he uh, said, yeah, you should work with him. Yeah, something. he wanted us to work with, with, with him, Australian Freebird. But I was like, well, he knows who we are. Yeah. yeah that, that, that was, was my, big, my, my biggest Come to hear what he said. I was like, man, I can't believe you knew who we were. Like, <laughs> yeah, that is really cool, though. Yeah. That like yeah. when you're, you become not just a, a not just a wrestler, not an. You know, hey, I'm, we're trying to get in, and you are in. Yeah, where you are one of the boys. Then took yeah, a long time to ex sure. accept that. You know, sure. it's because you know it, we're um, we're maybe originally both intro introverted. We uh, you know kind of just to ourselves. I think it's because growing up in locker rooms and stuff, my dad had to be this big personality and meet yeah. and greets and kind of just like, I could never do what my dad did and just kind of sit in there and I was okay with sitting behind and watching it. And we love him too. So we love seeing it. It's like, everyone thinks my dad's as cool as I do. You know, this is, this is great. And, um, 
and now that it feels like it's honestly having sons is what made oh, me I'm like sure. okay it's it's time i want my son to have that yeah. i want my son to experience that that and i want to show him that one day when i'm done and i'm retired that i i went and did my best i tried as hard as i could and that way i can give him something you know yeah. exactly that's exactly what, I, what i'm shooting for well, i can't wait to see what happens for you guys tonight on collision and probably when most people watch this will be after collision yeah. uh but uh and can't wait to see if we see a graphic soon that just has yeah. a picture of oh. you too and i'll leave yeah. oh, keep man. our fingers Let's crossed see it. there's it's... i can't wait to do this again too because there's so many more things that, that that we uh that i could talk to you guys we could we yeah, could talk man. All yeah, day we'll definitely this. do this is yeah. a fun yeah it's a super fun time it's easy to talking to you forget yeah. the cameras wrong we'd love to well good good yeah. i did turn them on yes okay good making sure I <laughs> <laughs> Ross Marshall, thank you guys so much for being on the Russell oh, Chat Podcast. Oh man, it was a pleasure, brother. Thank you for having me, man.